Topaz is an AI program, so it's using artificial intelligence to upscale video. It's based on a series of models, and there's different types of models and different things you can do. It can deinterlace. When I went through this using EDIUS, I actually went a bit more into some of the other modes that you've got inside of this program for things like deinterlacing, but I actually find I get the best results by deinterlacing it in stacks and then upscaling it inside of here. So I'm going to use my stacks clip that I just used and I'm going to upscale that. So I'm just going to take it and drag it in. And here you can see you've got the clip, which has been nicely deinterlaced. I want to upscale it. And I upscaling it using this model. So over here, you've got all the various different models that you can use. And there's lots of different things. Some of them are for doing very good slow motion. Some of them are for cleaning up. Some of them are for deinterlacing. But this one I like for upscaling. It doesn't deinterlace. I like it because of all these different settings down here. You can stack loads of clips in here, so if I was to bring in some more clips, like for example these, I can do different settings on all of them. I tend to actually apply the same settings to the lot. Now in particular, this model will automatically set settings for each clip. You can turn that off, and I like to turn that off because I don't like the automatic settings. So to turn that off, come up to the File, Preferences, and then this thing, Auto Detect Model Parameters. If that's ticked, then every time it goes to a clip, it'll make up its own parameters and won't use the ones you've set. Took me a long time to find that. I found that with the help of a tech support guy at Video Enhance. Turn that one off, then you can apply your own settings to any of these clips. So having chosen that, I've then got to set some settings here, say how much I'm going to scale it, and then make it. The scaling, I know from trial and error that I need to set it to 257. If you look down here, you can see the size it's going to make and the frame rate. And here you can see the size is 1974, which is obviously slightly bigger than high def, but I need it bigger than high def, so these black bars disappear off the side. And I just find 257 works for my particular footage. It's 1974 by 1480, because this is still going to be a square clip, because I'm going to pan and scan it afterwards. I'm going to make a ProRes file. There aren't that many options in terms of files. And again, I want to keep this as high as quality as possible. I could make a series of still images, but they're a bit of a pain in the neck to deal with. I'm choosing ProRes as the best compromise of something that's practical and good quality. Keeping the audio as well. You can also add grain to it, because one of the things I'm going to do is denoise it. And whenever you denoise something, it gets fuzzier, it loses detail. And if you put some grain in it, some film grain in it, it kind of makes it look like it's got a bit more detail, and it makes it look less kind of clean, less video processed. If I'm going to do that, I tend to do that afterwards, especially in Resolve, because there's a nice film grain filter in the studio version. The main things I fiddle with is this lot. And this is the kind of thing I fiddle with per clip. I can click this button and it'll automatically guess what the settings are. And to see what they look like, I can just press the preview button and it'll do a little preview of 30 frames of that video. Now looking at that, you can see, yep, it is upscaling that. It's, it's making the wood look a bit more like wood on here, knackered painted wood. It's sharper, it's nicer. Yep, I like that. Put it to 100% so I can see the full quality. And if I just want to see the change one, I'll go to view and I'll say single view. And I can see what the change one looks like. But I generally change these settings because I'm not sure I really like the automatic ones. These represent different parts of the image. So compression, reverting compression. When you save a clip, it's compressed in some way. Say if you make an MPEG-4 file, it's compressed. If you've ever made a JPEG and you've put the quality slider down too slow, you'll notice there's little wiggly lines and things. This is designed to get round that. It's designed to get rid of those compression artifacts because it's been taught what they look like. It tries to get rid of them. Now, my footage is actually started off life as Hi8 put onto DV. It's not been compressed very much, so I don't really need to do that. So I'm going to turn that off. Reduce noise. There is noise in there, so I like to bung up a bit of that. And particularly when we come to these clips here, there is an awful lot of noise in those. So I'm going to have to use an awful lot of noise correction on them. This one is not too bad, so I might fiddle with that slider. Dehalo, if you go to the edge of some clips, like here, if you just look there at around the very edge of the box, you can see you've got the edge of the box and then you've got this black extra line. That's the halo. So you could fiddle with this to try and get rid of that. Some of my really old clips have got a really bad halo on them. If you do that, it kind of fuzzes the edges up, so you've got to be a bit careful on playing with that. But with all of these things, it's a matter of getting some settings, doing a quick preview, and then carrying on to get something that you like. And de-blur is obviously trying to just get rid of the blurriness of the image. 
The main ones I fiddle with are recover details and sharpness. Now sharpness is pretty obvious. It's just regular sharpness, but clever regular sharpness. Recover details invent stuff. Again, using its AI, it tries to recognize what a face looks like and then put the eyes back in properly or whatever. Again, you use too much of these it can go really wacky. So I'll set some settings and I'll do a quick preview and see what it looks like. Let's put it to 100% again. And yep, yeah, that's not bad. But I was showing you this because I wanted to show you the diagonals on the interlacing. For trying to show you what these things do, it's not that great. I'm going to go to this shot instead. This shot is a lot noisier and it's really a pretty awful looking shot. Now I know it's so noisy that I need to whack the noise right up to the top. Don't need the revert compression on it. Dehalo, don't really need that. Not sure I need the de-blur. Let's do a quick preview of that. Now that amount of denoising, it's gonna get rid of a lot of details. Look how sort of undetaily a lot of that is. But on the other hand, all that fuzz has disappeared. So with this particular amount of fuzz, I like to whack the noise up all the way to the top and then make up for it by adding in a bit more sharpness and trying to add in a bit more detail and maybe deep blurring a bit and all I do is I go through and fiddle with these settings until I get something that in the preview looks good now looking at that preview there you can see some really strange things going on with my face as I get up and that's because it doesn't get everything right yeah this is not going to take my original footage and make it look like high definition it's going to make it as good as it can get and it's really just a question of doing a compromise so it doesn't look like that anymore and it looks more like that now I've particularly found on here that uh, putting the sharpness up, de-blurring doesn't do very well. That up, recover details maybe about there, does a pretty good job. Or a job at least that I'm happy with. So I set that one up, I've just got to do the same for these, which have been coming to it and then setting the settings. Now you don't have to do that, you could just have clicked edit all and then change the settings on them. And they will all have the same settings or you can go through and do them one at a time. Got the output scaling set. Oh, they all need to be on 257. I've got them all going to ProRes. I'm ready to go. I now can click start processing and get it processing. And it's not fast. This program uses the graphics card. So if you have a decent graphics card, it does a better job. You know, this first shot must be a couple of seconds. It's gonna take it two minutes. This whole job will probably take me about 15 minutes on this system, which has got a NVIDIA 1660 in it, which is not a bad graphics card, a couple of years old, but not a bad graphics card. Shove it onto a better graphics card, it'll do it faster. But it's not fast. If you're trying to put a final program into this, like I've taken some old videos I've got that have been an hour long and put it into it, it's been an overnight job to let it process it. And you can let it process a final video. You could do your entire edit, then make a movie, then pop it in here and get it to process it. I get a better result by taking my original clips, doing one clip at a time, bringing them back into the edit program, and then doing all the grading afterwards, which is a lot more time consuming, but I do think I get a better result out of it. So anyway, I'm gonna let those chunder away and come back when it's done and put those onto the timeline in Resolve so you can compare them. So along this stuff, you've got the original AVI files, these MOV files, which were then made from stacks, and then these ones, which you can tell were the final ones, are made from Topaz. You can always tell because at the end of it, it says you scaled it by 257%, and you're using PROB as the model, PROB being Proteus version 3. So those are my Topaz versions. I'm going to pop them into the program. I'm going to select them all, right-click, and say create bin with clips, just so I can tidy them up and then I want to shove them onto the timeline so let's see let's go back to my original timeline which has got my DV clips on it which has got all the scaling and all the other stuff and I'm going to take these clips and pop them on top so that's the first one so I gave it handles that's 25 at each end so to get to the right point for it to start it's got to look like that I am going to click on it go plus 25 mark an endpoint, and then drag it onto the timeline just chop the end off. I've got my Topaz version is on top of my original one. I just make this viewer a bit bigger. Let's turn off all these bits and pieces. Zoom in a lot. Just look at the top half and just disable. You can see the difference. That's the one that's been done in Topaz. That is the one that's been done in Resolve. Noise reduction is better. Everything's better basically about it. And look at the extra detail. Now some of it 
bit posterized, a bit paintery, but honestly, it's probably about as good as it's going to get. <laughs>